tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hello, my friends. Nice to see you here. I can't see you, but I can feel you. <laughs> uh, we're talking about omega. Actually, we're talking about n particles and the constraint today in Maya. But uh, we'll paint, well, we'll particle paint omega, the letter omega. In the Wikipedia, which is available in, this article is available in many languages, really, as you can see on the left side. Uh, find out yourself. Omega is the 24th and final letter in the Greek alphabet. In the Greek numeric system, it is a value of 800. The word literally means great O, as opposed to this O, O micron, which means little O. In phonetic terms, the ancient Greek omega is a long open mid O comparable to the vowel English ra, omega. In modern Greek, omega represents the mid backgrounded vowel, the same sound as omicron, so it's uh, omega. As the final letter in the Greek alphabet, omega is often used to denote the last, the end, or the ultimate limit of a set in contrast to, well, who would have guessed it, alpha, the first letter in the Greek alphabet. See alphabet and omega, which is another article here which compares the two of them. Alpha, the Greek alphabet, that's number one, and here is the omega. And we're going to draw this sign with particles, nothing else. So here is an empty scene in Autodesk Maya. I want to remind you, if you're not familiar with the interface so much, the one of the key things here is up on the left. Uh, animation, modeling, rigging, FX, rendering and customize. We are going to deal with special effects because we deal with particles. It's a special effects thing. But we also will deal a little bit with animation because we will invoke a constraint. So keep in mind we will be switching from this menu to this menu set. Uh, when you change the menu set you see that the um, menus here will the entries in the headline will change. So when I click on F FX, I will see lots of N or several N things appear here. The N cloth, the N particles, the N hair and the N constraints. So we're in the proper section now because we're going to create particles. N particles and create emitter. We want to emit particles and that's all we're going to do for the beginning, for the start and the particles they evaporate from the center of the scene and they go down. That's all fine, but we want them to paint or draw the omega. By the way, if you have particles which look differently, and you probably have, you need to go to the end particle shape. And in the end particle shape, you go down to shading. And under shading, you find the particle render type, which in my case is set to blobby surface software rendered uh, and I can uh, use spheres as well. I think spheres rendered nicely with Arnold but uh, this is not important for this tutorial anyway and once you've selected spheres rather than for example points you see the points you don't see the points because they're so little uh, so once you've decided to go for spheres you can now move up to the particle size and in the particle size you can change this and make them very big or very small. So 0 0.1 is not bad. Or 0 0.2, whatever. They fall down. Now I want them to paint the letter omega. And the easiest way to do this, I think, in computer animation as in 2D graphics in Photoshop, for example, there are always several ways to approach uh, a problem or a task. Uh, I go to the top window, which is here, and I draw the omega with the curves and surfaces tool. This is the standard curve tool. This one is uh, as good, basically. So uh, what I'll do is I uh, just draw a few dots. And I guess, pressing enter, this is a very nice omega. Now uh, I move our curve up. And 
and now I want to constrain the particle emitter to the omega curve. We have an end constraint here, but this does not help us because it doesn't show a menu to constrain something to uh, a curve. But uh, when we go to, as I indicated at the beginning, to animation, and you really need to know this, otherwise pff, you're, you're pretty lost here. And here you have a constraint menu, and now you can choose the motion path and attach the particles to the motion path. In order to actually attach them to the motion path, uh, you see this in the status line at the very bottom left, you need to select the object to constrain and the curve. So we will constrain the emitter to the curve. The selection of course is important because we don't want to constrain the end particles to the curve but the emitter to the curve. And now we go to constrain and motion path and attach to motion path and in this case it might be quite good to use the option box because we can now say we want to start the time at 1 and we uh, have an end time of say 300. So we really take our time to paint the omega. Apply and for the next time I want to reset the setting so next time I use this command it will be set to the default. You see the emitter has jumped to the beginning of our omega curve. This is nice and now I run the simulation and I need to extend the range to 300 because we have 300 frames. And this is already quite nice. But now we want to see the particles sit somewhere so we can read an omega. Very easy. You need to know where to go. Nucleus. The nucleus provides the gravity and something very nice which is called a ground plane. We could achieve this in another way by just creating a plane and using it as a collider but this is the really straightforward way to do it uh, in the I'm um, in the nucleus tab in the attribute editor and I, and I use the plane what happens now the particles sit on the plane but they don't show the omega because they are so disturbed how can we fix this well, there's an easy way to fix it, uh, and it's called plane bounce, zero, basic and the plane friction very high. So, and the stickiness very high. That means the particles don't dance around so much. See, this is much better, and we already see something like an omega because of the stickiness. It's very simple. You just know, need to know where to locate it. If we reduce the amount of particles we will see a thinner omega. Where do we do that? In the emitter because we don't want so many particles to be emitted. And the emitter sits here in the attribute editor and it currently has a particle rate of 100. Let's reduce this to 20. Now we want the particles to do something which they normally wouldn't do. Currently they are when one particle feels the other one, it spreads away, it goes away. So it's like a real-world impulse exchange and that's something we don't really want because we just want them to sit there. And uh, this is under end particles because it's not a thing of the emitter, it's a thing of the particles. And here we have the collisions. And the particles are by default set to self-collide. That means they feel each other. 
And when we uncheck this, the particles don't feel each other, they just fall down and they don't care where the other particle sits. I would say we're almost done. Maybe we could use a, f a little bit more particles, like 40 something. Nice. Final thing, when we extend the range to 400, what happens at the end? We have lots of more particles here at the end because it, the emitter keeps emitting particles, 43 per second, at the end of the curve. How can we avoid this? Well, actually, this should be a task for your homework. If you want to do a homework, um, no, I won't give you a hint. I will just show you the effect how, or what it looks like when you achieve this. Here we go. So what you keep, need to keep in mind when you work with dynamics, you have several objects here in the outline and you need to know what they're good for, what they, what they do. The emitter emits particles at a certain frame per second, or at a certain speed actually as well. The end particles is about the shape of the particles and their dynamic behavior. If you have three particles, do you want them to push each other away or not, for example? The nucleus provides the gravity and, in our case, the really cool ground plane, just a single click solution. And uh, if I don't want gravity, they wouldn't fall down. Uh, this is all done in the nucleus. Apart from that, I have the curve which describes the omega and that's all there is. Bye bye.